Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a great pleasure, amen, to be back to bring forth another word, amen, concerning prophetic pitfalls. Yes, I will be teaching a series on prophetic pitfalls. So really, this message is just the beginning. Um, it's more or less like an entry into the teaching that will be going on for the next month amen it's however the holy spirit wants to use me in this teaching amen so the scriptures that i will be using amen will contain some illustrations of what we experience in ministry even for those who consider consider themselves to be prophets or prophetess amen but you don't have to be a prophet to have pitfalls these pitfalls can happen to anyone amen and so it's important for us to understand how spiritual warfare begins with our mind that's right how spiritual warfare begins with our mind how it begins with visions daydreaming imaginations evil imaginations uh prophetic uh pitfalls uh, develops all of these symptoms that I'm giving you, such as night dreams, terror, fear, anxiousness, you know, having anxiety, panic attacks, you know, um, doubting, lacking faith, uh, not eating, not taking care of yourself because you are distracted with the affairs of the world. When you are called into ministry, you cannot, we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted with the affairs of the world it's so important for us to pray and prayer does help amen but the most important thing that we need to do is change our environment we need to learn how to change our our environment and do those please those things that is pleasing and acceptable unto god through the power of his holy spirit Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I want to just read a scripture to you. uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And it says that for we are his workmanship. Amen. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So God has ordained us, amen, to walk, amen, in our calling because he has already prepared the way for us. We are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. We no longer belong to ourselves. We now belong to him. We are now his handiwork. We we belong to him because he has created in us a clean heart he has renewed our minds he's given us a new spirit so we are able amen we now have the ability to do the good works which god has already planned for us you know predestined uh, for the amplified it gives the version it says that god has predestined god has planned beforehand for us amen so god has already prepared for us to be his handiwork god created us to be his workmanship so that we could do the things that his son christ jesus did before we came you know into the picture but we going but we are going to do greater works that's the key thing we are going to do greater works and god is a jealous god and god will permit things to happen in our lives just because of our rebellious ways because of our lifestyles amen but these things that happen to us becomes pitfalls and these pitfalls can delay us set us back amen it could prevent us moving forward in ministry because we are no longer doing the things that pleases god we are now doing the things that pleases the flesh amen so we're going to just look at um another scripture and that scripture is coming from the book of ephesians amen praise god ephesians and it says right here in the first let's start at verse 10 verse 10 ephesians chapter 4 verse 10 he that descended is the same also and ascended up afar above all heavens that he might fill all things amen fill all things and the word says in verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ this is what god 
has given to the church, to the body of Christ. He has gave, amen, apostles. He has gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. But they, our job is to do the will of God, amen, is to help, to assist, to edify, to build the body of Christ. This is what ministry is about. But if we are not being taught how to fulfill the ministry of God, amen, these things can become pitfalls in our lives, amen. So one of the things I stated earlier was prayer helps. But changing our environment can make a difference. Spiritual warfare generally can be attracted to our environment, such as our home, work, our associations, who we associate with, friendships, relationships, including our families, amen, including our ministries. These things promote pitfalls in our lives. These things promote spiritual warfare. It gives a a door, a portal, an opening to the enemy to come in, amen, to torment us, to harass us, amen, to cause us not to continue to walk in the spirit, but to walk in the flesh, especially when we're dealing with these pitfalls that can cause a lot of frustration in our lives. Amen. And we want to eliminate these frustrations. We want to eliminate them by reading the word of God and praying with the scriptures, trusting in God when he gives the word, when he speaks the word, and we have to decree, declare the word, release the word, be in alignment with the word of God, and believe that God is the author and the finisher of our faith amen God will use our faith amen because he is going to get the glory God is going to get the glory out of our mess and right now things appear to be pretty messy amen messy messy but right now God is going to use you amen in your situation maybe he might use you in somebody else's situation this I don't know but I know God is going to use you in your situation just like he has and will continue to use me amen because every time something happens in our life we focus on us we focus on what's going on with us and we become self-centered i have become self-centered i have neglected there are other people in my life that needs to hear god needs to hear the voice of god but right now it ain't about us and it ain't about me so we have to really evaluate our life and begin to look at who we are associated with who is in our life amen What friendships do we have? What relationships do we entertain? Such as who, such as family, um, our association, where do we work? You know, what do we contribute to the pitfalls in our lives? How do we contribute to the spiritual warfare? Because spiritual warfare will find legal ground within our lives. So we must be careful who and what we submit to. We must be careful to who and what we are submitting to because false prophecy can create false sense of security in our lives and we're not always going to hear from God especially when we are going contrary to the will of his word the purpose and the plans that he has already predestined for us already ordained for us and this message like I said it is for prophets and prophetess but it is also for apostles it's for evangelists for teachers for pastors for anyone who believes they have a calling in their life and today you got to make a decision how to get out of this false sense of you know security because right now when someone speaks into your life and it's not God speaking, it opens doors to spiritual warfare. And those spiritual warfare, those spiritual warfares create pitfalls, unnecessary situations in our lives, unnecessary situations, unnecessary visions, daydreaming, night dreams, terror, anxiety attacks, being anxious, you know, having doubt amen these things come to distract you from the very thing that God has already called you to do God has called us he has called us to be workmen to be his workmen to be his handiwork he is cleaning us cleaning us up but we must hear God when God speak it is so important so this is a short 
teaching is more or less like an introductory with what I'm going to do. I'm going to list um, different frustrations, you know, different pitfalls such as frustration, anger, disappointment, shame, you know, different illustrations in the Bible with prophets, you know, what's going on and and how's it affecting the prophets of today and the people who are called into ministry? How is it affecting us? Amen. Praise God. So we just give God the honor and the glory. We just thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. And I pray that this message will continue to help you right now and in the next following years. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Amen. And we're going to just trust God. Trust God. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for this message. Thank you, God, for the introduction to this message, prophetic pitfalls, for those who believe they are called by you. I pray, God, that they will research the scriptures and understand that you belong to them, that you they are called to be your help, workman, you know, to be fisher of men just like Jesus said to the 12 disciples he has called us to be fishers of men and the key thing is whoever's listening and listening to his prayer you didn't choose God God chose you amen God chose you to do his purpose to do his will so don't let no one convince you that you have to wait on man's validation on man's ordination because it's Jesus Christ who's going to ordain you. Amen. Jesus is going to ordain you. You could get out there right now. Whoever's listening right now, you could get out there with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let the Lord be your shepherd. Let him lead you in the path of righteous in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Christ has ordained us. Amen. Christ has given us the gifts through his death, through his burial through his resurrection and we have to begin to recognize God's sovereignty in our lives and I pray for you I pray that you will begin to understand that Christ will ordain you because Christ has chosen you just like he has chosen me he has chosen you and if you don't understand right now what's going on in your life if you don't understand the purpose and the plans that he has for you, this is your opportunity, amen, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. But you got to take time and seek God. Seek him while he may be found, amen, because he loves you. And I pray and decree and declare, amen, the word of God over for your life that you will begin to have faith and trust him. And trust him. For the word of God says in Psalms 139 verse 24. And it says, And see if there be any wickedness, wicked way in me. And lead me in the everlasting. Amen. The word of God says in verse 23. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. The word. This is what the word is saying. We're saying to God right now. Whoever you are. Just repeat with me. God search me. Search me oh God. Know my heart. Know me Abba Father. Know me. Try me. Know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. And that is Psalms 139 verse 23 and verse 24. Own that scripture. Make it personal. Amen. And know that God loves you. God loves you. And you don't have to wait on nobody to ordain you. Because it's Christ who does the ordaining. And this way... You will begin to grow. This way, you will begin to understand what the pitfalls are in your life. Amen. What are the symptoms? What are the pitfalls? And this is what this teaching is going to be about. This is just an introductory, as I stated earlier. But I pray that God will be your provision. I pray that God will be your help. I pray that you will understand your purpose in Christ Jesus. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. According to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10 and 11. Amen. I pray that you will understand the purpose that God has given you in your life. Amen. That you will not be without. You will never be without. 
And I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.